there, my name is Anne Monique Clary and I'm the editor at Walter Magazine. We're here at the North Carolina Museum of Art today to take you behind the scenes in Art and Bloom. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our sponsors. Thank you to Fink's Jewelers, to Greenfront Interiors and Rugs, to Design Line Signature, and to Specialists in Plastic Surgery for making this day possible. I can't wait to take you inside and show you all around. Hi there, I'm here with Patrick from Greenfront Interiors and Rugs, who's one of our sponsors for this event. And I'd like to talk to him a little bit about why he chose to be involved and how arts and florals and interiors all sort of uh, relate to each other. Hi Patrick. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for being here. It's so fun to be in this amazing space and to, you know, see all this stuff. It's and, amazing, isn't it? Yeah. So what made you guys decide to be a part of this event this year? Uh, well, we always want to be a part of the Walter Magazine event series and every year we uh, try to get at least two in. Uh, and this past year we just thought this would be really a nice special fit for Greenfront, uh, especially dealing with flowers and uh, different designers of a different genre. So yeah. we deal with interior designers a lot and just they, and the public working on design, but this was a really unique opportunity to meet with uh, floral designers and find yeah. out what we have in common. Yeah, well and then what did you find were some parallel points? Oh, uh, there's a, a lot more than you most people would think, but yeah. dealing with um, you know, the texture and design and different lines. So, so a lot of the same things we do with the interior design um, and a lot of behind the scenes thought that they put into things. It's not as, you know, like the display in front of us, uh, it probably took hours and hours if not days of thought process going right. into this arrangement. So interior design is very much the same way. You know, we have to give it some thought, look at the design, get to know the customer right. and where it's going. Well, and one of the things that kind of struck me as we were interviewing some of these florists is that, you know, they're assigned a piece of art and they kind of use that as a starting point. Like, do you ever do that in interiors where you have something that's a starting point that inspires a whole room? Oh, absolutely. Especially at Greenfront, since we have such a large selection of rugs. Yeah. Uh, for most of us at the store, that's our that's our jumping off point, going straight to the rugs and choosing that. So then we can go with the, the genre, the style, especially the, the colors, the coloration of that. And then we can just build up from there. And then how do you kind of tease out the story from your customers or kind of figure out what they like what they want to kind of pull forward in terms of the design uh, a lot of questions where are they from are they you know are they from here or are they from elsewhere like you know most most people we run into but uh, they're from somewhere else mm -hmm. whether it's the United States or international um, so we get to know them from there we ask simple things just like what is your favorite color um, and it could be a special trip it can be uh, so many things and like from beginning here uh, many times it's based off a favorite piece of art. Yeah. Yeah. What are some of your favorite ways to pull that out in color? Is it by a piece of upholstery? Is it through furniture, like or hard furniture? Or? All the above. All the above. If we start with a rug, then we can start looking at uh, different fabrics for the sofa, for the chairs. Um, some things may be already existing, but if not, if one of treatments, uh, but then we go to paint color. You know, all what's going on, building up and also what's going on in the surroundings. So that the eye can travel through the room, much like art, like you just don't stop and stare at one thing. You, right. You're able to flow freely and enjoy the your new surrounding. When you are looking, when you're putting together a room, when you're trying to combine all those elements, do you try to sort of match things exactly? Or are you doing sort of more loose interpretation or how are you kind of pulling things together to work with each other? The more time we spend uh, with each customer or client in the store, we learn more. And yeah. that's why it's kind of like what we're doing right now, just casual conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, you get so much out, more out of that than if it's a scripted uh, yeah. questionnaire. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being a part of this um, behind the scenes at Art and Bloom this year. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.
There are so many creative people who are involved in making Art and Bloom come to fruition. Let's go inside and talk to a few of the floral artists and learn about how they create their arrangements. Hi, I'm here with Morgan Howell Moylan, and we're going to talk about her arrangement. So, first of all, tell me what piece this is inspired by. Um, so, this is Daphne by Harriet Hosner. She is this American sculptor, and there's not very many of them here in the museum, so I got Daphne. Okay, and she's a, a statue, right? She's a marble bust. And so, how did you kind of translate her into florals here? Marble busts are hard when you want to work with color. So, we decided to talk about seeing her in reverse, and what would she look like after Harriet Hosner was done with her and she was dissolving into nature. So we use this fantastic floral wire, um, it's just chicken wire that the florists have coated mm -hmm. um, and made kind of a negative of what we would think she would look like as she dissolved. And then what flowers did you use and what do they kind of mean in this context? Well, so we use Trixie Dianthus. This is one of my favorite things oh, to work yes. with. I know, isn't it fantastic? Um, a lot of people think it looks like Dr. Seuss flowers. Uh-huh, totally does. It does, it yeah. does. Where so would you did, go so from So do these guys, I don't know what the these are. Pods, uh -huh, poppy the poppy pods, poppy pods. pods. Uh -huh. You know, even the birds of paradise are kind of Seussian. Yeah. So maybe I'm just a Seuss person. Well, and then in the article that we wrote, you talked about how you wanted to kind of picture her like rising from the garden. garden. So she has to give up her beauty and um, the unwanted advances of Apollo. So she's slowly descending into nature. So you've got the laurel tree. Um, her father turned her into a laurel tree. So you have the bay laurel coming over mm -hmm. and nature is just collecting her. But we still wanted her to be beautiful. So we use beautiful flowers. Nice. And so I see roses in here. What are these guys down here? Um, this is just wax flower. And with wax flower, I love the buds because yeah. the buds are sometimes more interesting than the flowers themselves. These are gorgeous ferns that have been bleached. It's a mm -hmm. new process. Cool. And, and what are these guys? Probably every art and bloom. I've used them. They're Harry Walker's. What Harry Lauder's walking stick. Oh, interesting. And how many art and blooms have you been a participant in? So this is my fourth year, third art and bloom. So nice. I did the trash cans last year for the art and bloom that didn't happen. Oh, that's so sad. I was I know. so sad last year. I yeah. know. Yeah. They, they well, this is amazing. I mean, this is cool such cans, a big no thing. Considering that the sculpture itself is about this big, it's incredible that you've interpreted it into this huge thing. I have a really hard time of doing anything small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think at one point in time I was thinking it was going to be small, but you know, you just no. gotta keep adding, right, right? Yeah. yeah. And what's your favorite part about participating in this? Mm. I think my favorite part is getting to do something just for me. I yeah. mean, you draw this piece of art and you have no idea what you're doing, um, but no one else is telling you how to do it. You've gotta figure it yeah. out yourself. And I love that. Yeah, and you kind of have to research it yourself. and You research it, you sit with and... it, you don't know what you're doing. Um, and like when you first see the art, you think, how am I going to do a white marble bust? Right. Uh, and every year that I get something, I think, how am I going to do this? And yeah. every year I'm like, at the end of it, I love it. I just, yeah. I love whatever it is. Yeah, it's beautiful. You've done a really nice job. Thanks. And it, I mean, I think I would love to say that I could do really structural, fun stuff, but this is really evocative of my style as well, which is kind of wild and woolly anyway. Yeah, I love it. Well, thank you so much for sure. talking to us today. Well, thanks for visiting. I'm here with Carol Dowd, who has also been here um, with uh, the Art and Bloom event since the very beginning. Um, and tell me, I guess first tell me about the painting that you're interpreting here. Okay, so um, it's a painting by Andrea de Sarto, I think I'm say, pronouncing that correctly. But he was, um, he was known as a, a colorist, mm -hmm. and he was also known as um, a faultless painter. Mm -hmm. There's actually a poem written about him. Robert Browning wrote a poem, a poem about him, uh -huh. and it tells his whole life story. Oh, wow. So I took a quote mm -hmm. out of the poem um, for my piece. Okay. And, but I thought he was a credible, a, a great colorist. As you can see, he's just the colors in the painting just yeah. very vibrant. Yeah. So that's kind of what I went on. I went for the very vibrant coloring that he also showed in the painting. 
So tell uh, me how you use the colors to represent the different people on the paintings. Oh yeah, so um, of course this is this is mother. Mm -hmm. um, you know, this is the Madonna. Um, so the, the pink all represents her and it's pink to kind of some light pinks um, mm -hmm. and then a little white for her face and then I, I made her her head wrap. Also the white is for the baby mm -hmm. and then all this is for John the Baptist. Yeah. So I, just very vibrant and bright. I loved his orange jacket. Yeah. You know, it's just like that bright orange color and yeah. her hot pink and so I really wanted to play off of those colors. And it's a little bit more literal of mm -hmm. an interpretation than I norm normally do. Yeah. But I thought it warranted, the painting warranted it because it yeah. had the three figures in there and I felt like that I really wanted to like capture what I felt yeah. a, a little bit about the painting. I love the way she's shrouding mm -hmm. the she's children. Kind of in yeah, there. yeah, she's like shrouding the children. So that's why I really wanted to make her veil. And what did you the, make this out of? Um, that's river birch. River birch. It's dried river birch. And how did you get the halo to sort of, or her head wrap to kind of hold? Oh like yeah, that? it's really cool. I'll take it off. Oh, but wow. it's it's um it's all it's it's basically asperdistra leaves. Uh huh. And I folded them. Uh -huh. I folded them together and glued them. And then there's a wire in it uh -huh. inside of it. And then I glued all of it together. Wow. And um, will that hold up for the whole time? Or yes. Do you have to because kind of trade them it's out? it's a they're pretty much um, billy balls and they all dry. Uh -huh. So they'll kind of dry in place. Yeah. Um, it, it won't even lose its color hardly. Yeah. So it'll, um, so yeah, it'll, it'll just, just stay. It'll just stay. Yeah. And then what other flowers did you use in here? Oh, uh, carnations. Mm -hmm. I just thought that would, um, to me, it looks like the ruffling of people's skin, mm -hmm. you know, also in the softness of the roses. Yeah. Plus they hold up so well yeah. in work. Um, in, in roses and carnations, they hold up really long. Yeah. They have a long lifespan. Um, and then I also did snapdragons. Mm -hmm. um, well, and I love how you got them to do the, the curve yeah, the we, we use, yeah, we kind of, I kind of use them like the arms mm -hmm. coming out, like little tentacles to hold the cross, yeah. um, to connect the two pieces. And, um, but I really, yeah, I really enjoyed making it. Well, and then, and then this also, I, I didn't want, because I knew I had people walking all the way around yeah. this piece. I didn't want to cover the whole piece with greenery. Right. You know, even though I made this, which I wanted to expose. So what I did was I just took leaves and then I just mimicked her shroud. Yeah, the draping there. Yeah. Beautiful. And just mimicked her shroud a little bit coming down. Very cool. Yeah. Well, so. it's just amazing to me that just being assigned this one painting can become the jumping off point for not only reinterpreting this, but doing research into the artist and the yeah. art and all these other things that are related to it. Too. I know. And it's so funny because it pulls, it pulls the Bible in. Yeah. It pulls um, Br British literature in. Yeah. Yeah it, yeah. it it pulls a lot of other things in. It's a whole surround, but it, you have to think that Robert Browning lived the same around the same time as the Salto did. Yeah. So yeah. they all lived at the same time. Yeah, they were contemporaries. They yeah. were contemporaries. So he wrote the story about him, mm -hmm. that poem about him. Obviously, he knew something about him. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for oh, sharing this story. Oh, thank you too. This is great. Thank oh, you. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Tessier, who is one of the florists for Art and Bloom, and I understand you've been here since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, mm -hmm. so I think yeah. we've decided five or six years that you've done it. Six years, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me about the piece that you were assigned this year. Well, um, we have worked with the Allegory of Music by Francois Boucher, a French artist, during the Rococo period. Lots of cherubs and ornamentation and pastel colors and that's certainly evidenced in our painting. Yeah. Um, and what we felt is that it's not so much an allegory of music as an allegory of love uh -huh. because of some of the symbolism 
in the painting. So what were some of the symbols that you were picking up on? Well, um, some of the symbols are uh, turtle doves, and um, there is music in the painting, yeah. allegory of music. Mm -hmm. However, there are turtle doves, there are roses, uh, the turtle doves signify Venus, the goddess of love. There's a quiver of arrows okay. on the side. So mm -hmm. all those things kind of make it more like love instead yeah. of... Actual music. Yeah, actual music, yes. So then what did you choose as sort of your jumping off point for the arrangement? Well, our jumping off point was really the eyes of these little cherubs uh -huh. who are in the middle of the picture. Uh -huh. And the cherubs are not looking, not one is looking at the music. Yeah. Their eyes huh. are all different directions, mm -hmm. and they look a little startled or puzzled or something. So we noticed that, and we thought, well, that's weird. Yeah. Um, maybe we could do something with that, because it doesn't look like they're happily sitting on this bed of music and flowers and yeah. love things. Yeah. <laughs> So then, are, did you try to do the eyes with the anemones here? Is that what you... Well, no, actually, our anemones are a reference to the music. Oh, the, the black and the black white. The black and white. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, so that's, that we particularly chose this variety of anemone. Uh -huh. And, of course, as soon as we saw this picture, uh, my co-designer, Jenna, said, peonies. We've right. got to use peonies. The lush, the little, rounded. The little babies, their rounded yeah. features. Uh -huh. And so that's how we started. Uh -huh. And so we kind of put these cherubs in a garden mm -hmm. as opposed to sitting on this nice fabric. And when you look at the sky, the other thing that we noticed was there's a little bit of darkness uh -huh. around the edges. And we wondered maybe what was the artist thinking? Was he was something scaring these cherubs? Yeah. Well, we decided that we'd flip that sky, mm -hmm. put it down here. Oh, I see, yeah. With the blue and some other textures. And maybe these cherubs are not happy sitting where they are in the painting. Mm -hmm. We think they're a little nervous because they're sitting on these spiky, spiky um, eryngium yeah. or sea thistle. Uh -huh. And we're wondering, are they trying to escape? Huh. I don't know. Well, I feel like with these branch, what kind of, what are these branches This is here? curly willow, curly willow, which is one of my favorite things to use. It's yeah. very organic and it moves. You can do a lot with it. Yeah. Well, and it does, but it also feels kind of cage-like in and, this arrangement. And yeah. we thought of that too. Yeah. Um, we've changed our design of the cage structure. Mm -hmm. um, and we did leave it open because, you know, if they're nervous, they want to be able to get away. Right, right. And so what other flowers did you use in the mix here? Well, uh, I mentioned the anemones mm -hmm. and the two different colors of peonies. Yeah. This uh, taller pink flower is lisianthus. And then this beautiful snapdragon. We have mm -hmm. two different colors of snapdragon. And over time, these are going to curve with the light and straighten up with the light. So it's going to look a little different tomorrow, say, Interesting. than it does today. And we just have to know that that's what they do. Yeah. This is bunny grass, and you can't have a garden without bunnies. Yeah. And it's very soft and yeah. fluffy. And then this is eryngium, eryngium. or uh, sea thistle, sea holly, some people that. call it. And then a little bit of uh, ruscus. This Lovely. greenery is ruscus. Beautiful. Well, I really Thank like you. your arrangement. And I Thank think I'm you. excited for everybody to come see and look at the painting and then look at this and kind of see where you pulled all those influences. Well, I'll be here talking to folks during the whole four days. Oh, great. And so I'm anxious to talk with visitors too. Great, well thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to Behind the Scenes at Art and Bloom at the North Carolina Museum of Art. Again, my name is Anne Monique and I'm the editor at Walter Magazine. I'd like to thank our sponsors again for making today possible. Thank you to Fink's Jewelers, Greenfront Interiors and Rugs, Design Line Signature, and Specialists in Plastic Surgery. I hope you all enjoyed what you saw and have a great day.